Where do you put your solar panel? On the roof like this? Have you thought about on the hood? Because you won't strap any storage on there, I'm sure. Skeptical? Yeah, me too. But hope I can explain it all clear in this video. At first I was like, oh, that's so smart. And then pause the second, I'm like, that's kind of dumb because it gets hot super easily. Then doesn't that make the solar panel not efficient? I see cool rigs. That should means I'm in the right place. Actually, before we get out, how's my hair? <laughs> you know people say Jeep hair don't care? Not the case if your Jeeper owns a salon himself. You know how funny it is meeting Hart the first time out in the camp and by the end of the trip when we were saying bye, he said, when you're in town, come to the salon, we'll fix this. I showed up in a botched up blonde and here we have it. I feel like wearing a wig all the time. Anyways, back to the topic. I am waiting to get something done on my car to sort of complete the setup before I go. Um, if you remember a couple months ago, earlier this year, when I was showing my uh, battery setup and when I put my a new solar panel on the roof, I talked about this very valuable real estate that's unobstructed under sun that could totally be used by putting a solar panel on top. That is your bonnet. The hood and we might actually just make that happen so if you missed that video um, I will just sort of what go through what I might set up already have so main battery the cranking battery I now connect it to a dual battery setup by using Redox BC DC 1225D charger that is a DC to DC charger and my secondary battery is in a small cradle in the engine bay it's very tiny and it only takes a group 35 battery AGM. So now I have a 48 amp hour one in their Optima yellow top. It actually just died and I have a new one right here that I'll pop it in um, real soon. With that BC DC charger, you also have the solar input option. So I put my Renogy 100 watt monocrystalline flexible panel through BC DC in input. The reason I went for a flexible one, part of it is because of the weight, it's more slimline. And also I don't really know how to mount if you were to get those fixed ones. Um, it's just way easier for me to just double side tape it on top of my roof rack right now as a solution. And from my secondary battery, uh, it's always constantly supplying power to my fridge. I don't take it out, like ever. And as well as my 12 volt plug in the trunk area, that one's also connected to my secondary battery. So the power is always on, even the car is off. I can always plug things into that. I've been seeing these Cascadia 4x4 hood solar running around back when, I guess last year when uh, some Jeep from West Coast got one. Um, but it was really tiny on the Jeep because depending on the shape of your hood, you can get different, you need different sizes, different design. But luckily for 100 series like mine, we have quite a flat bonnet that can accommodate a bigger solar panel. So if I didn't remember it wrong, I believe this is 100 watt that I'm able to get. Let me actually confirm that. Let's go in and say hi and pull the cart in, get it process started. Side. Yeah, I do a little test fit. And so you're going to be like the first tester here for the 100 watt. Is that going to be okay closing? Is that? So much room on this hood. Wow. I know, it's really flat. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Look how nicely the lines work on that. Yeah, that's really sick. So that 100 watt's gonna be great. That'll be the next, uh, my improvement mm -hmm. 100 watt panel. I don't know if it'll work on the 80 series though. I was looking at the, the 80 series. It might not. And the 80 series, had, like it doesn't have this line. It kind of comes up more straight. It looks a lot like our 90 is, is narrow. Yeah. Cascadia currently has a panel for 80 and 100 series Land Cruiser that provides 90 watt solar power. It was created based on the 80 series hood, which has a narrower flat section in the middle. Here we are prototyping the new 100 watts model for the 100 series specifically. You also get two stickers with your solar panel. I'm just gonna put them in my pouch right here. 
So yeah, this pouch thing. I saw people making them for a dash pouch that like uh, Velcro onto this. Whereas, you know, in Australia, everybody have this dash mat thing. So I just thought I have those Milwaukee pouches um, laying around anyway. So stitched Velcro hooks in the back and I could either put them on a dash or if you don't have a dash mat, everybody collects these pouches anyways. So you got your roof organizer and there's another one. Instead of buying a new one, we all have sort of freebie pouches lying around. So yeah, there goes your idea. You're welcome. By the way, I got new pouches too. Link in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, so this is the Cascadia 4x4 MPPT solar charge controller that we include in each of our VSS system kits. And it's a completely waterproof unit, which is why we chose it. And it's meant to be mounted in the engine bay. So you have your two battery leads coming off of it with an inline fuse. These connect to your vehicle battery. You have the two leads with MC4 connectors that connect to our, the solar panels. And then you have two accessory wires here, which are 12 volt wires, which you can use to install a 12 volt outlet anywhere you want in the vehicle. These wires also have a low voltage cutoff built into them. So they'll provide power all the time unless the unit senses the battery is getting too low to restart your vehicle, then it will cut power to them. And this little antenna here is just a temperature sensor. So if it senses the unit's getting too hot or starting to overheat, it'll shut it off and let things cool down until um, it's at the correct operating temperature. Which is? Good question. <laughs> Um, okay. It's probably somewhere around like 135 Celsius, but Whoa, you know, okay. it's way hotter than an engine bay traditionally gets. No. The thing is, a lot of people don't really seem to understand, which is why it's kind of irrelevant. So even if it does have a sort of a high temperature cutoff, it's irrelevant because when you really need charge is when your engine is off, right? This is actually one thing I kind of was uh, when I first knew about this this whole idea of putting a solar panel on, on your hood. At first I was like, oh, that's so smart. And then pause the second, I'm like, that's kind of dumb because it gets hot super easily. Then doesn't that make the solar panel not efficient? And then another second later, I'm like, what am I thinking? Because when your engine is running, you want the power coming from your crank, coming from your engine. And it's only... When you need solar is when you're parked for a long time, when you're not running your engine to supply power and that's when your battery die and that's when you want the sun to come down. So essentially it's the same idea as you would to put a solar panel on your roof where I've been getting a lot of people complaining to me that uh, it gets inefficient when it's super hot under the sun and when your roof gets toasted and then this panel gets hot by by being on the roof itself. So that's why I feel like I'm doing a little smart idea by putting it on a rack so that you get a little bit airflow underneath. And then that's what I want to mention about their panel, why it's a little different than if you were just, just to buy a flexible solar panel. If I were to mount that energy on my bonnet, that would be a little, it burns faster because there is a insulation in their panel. And a little bit of an air pocket underneath. Yeah. underneath the panel. So each of our panels come with this 3M tape pre-installed around the perimeter. That's how it adheres to the hood. And this uh, neoprene kind of weather stripping thermal barrier that we pre-install as well to keep it up off the hood and create that little air pocket. So the first step of the install is make sure your hood is nice and clean. Obviously. We recommend cleaning it with uh, alcohol. And you want to wash the vehicle before as well. Sorry. Um, just, just as you do. <laughs> I have a bunch of hail damage from back when in Australia. Just crazy. All those bumps on top. Give some more air pocket, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hail in Australia. Yeah. Don't do that to your car. No. The first step here is just making sure you get the solar panel lined up where you're going to want to install it. And then you'll base where you put the vinyl off of where you want to have the panel sitting. What are the vinyls for? So we include a vehicle vinyl, like a protective wrap that goes on underneath the solar panel that just creates a bit of a barrier between your vehicle paint and the panel itself so you don't get any scratches or the panel's not bouncing up and down nice. on, the, uh, on the paint. I just soaked it already. No, alcohol did. 
Oh, oh, this, so this is soap. This is soap, yeah. So the, the next first step. clean is alcohol, and then now it's soaping. This is for the vinyl install, so the vinyl doesn't stick down on the hood, and you can move it around into place. The two-man peel, or woman. Perfect. <laughs> it's gonna be tricky. Now we need to get it around this. <laughs> okay. So the point of soaping the hood is so you can still move it around a little bit before you get to the final position. So once the vinyl's in place, you squeegee all the soapy water out from underneath it and it will stick down once all the soap is gone. So after the vinyl's down, you're going to want to clean everything with alcohol again. Make sure the surface doesn't have any soap residue left on it before you prep it for the, uh, the tape. So the next step once it's cleaned after you put the vinyl on is to apply the 3M adhesion promoter where the tape is going to adhere to the hood. Um, in each of our kits we include two of these little wipes that you use. Um, for now I just have it on a rag here. So you're going to cover the outside edge where the panel will stick down. And once you've wiped it down, you do want to let it dry for a couple of minutes before you get ready to put the panel on. Okay, it sounds like there's some quite extensive steps just to make sure that it sticks on properly. I'm lucky enough to have the team at Cascadia to help me with that. But if you're doing it at home, they ship. Do you guys ship internationally or North we America? Sure do, yeah. Yeah, internationally oh, okay. shipping. So wherever you are, if you want to do it uh, in your garage, do it yourself. They have this for 24 pages of instructions teaching you step by step with colored pictures um, on this pretty nice, thick, quali good quality paper too, teaching you how to do it um, from alcohol wipes, soap, vinyl down and up to what we're doing right now. And there's still more steps to come. So you definitely won't get lost. So you put the panel in place and then you can measure to the vinyl that's underneath and make sure you're, you have your uh, 30, 30 centimeters all the way around so the panel is nice and centered. 30 centimeters to where? To the edge of the panel and to the vinyl underneath. So you just slide the ruler in underneath Ooh. and you can measure it. So that's standard to every model? Yes. Yeah. All the vinyls are the same offset. Start moving the tape all the way around and don't press it down yet until all the tape has been removed. Okay, so once all the tape's been removed, you can start sticking down the panel. It's best to use a cloth and just kind of run your hands around the outside and make sure it's really stuck down onto the hood and there's no gaps showing. It's good to do this process for five or ten minutes or so. Wow, five just, or ten minutes. Just to keep making sure that everything is stuck down properly. Before we do the wiring, we want to attach these handy zip tie blocks that we include with each of the kits, along with zip ties, so it's completely plug and play. Before we do that, we'll clean off the bottom of your hood there, so these actually adhere properly. Oh. And if you have any leftover adhesion promoter, you can just give it a quick wipe as well, and that'll help these stick onto the hood better. Just gonna mount this here with the lights facing out so that you can uh, see. see the lights and that tells you exactly what the charge controller is doing. There's a full description of what the lights do included in our instruction, instruction. manual, yeah. Once you've secured the controller, bring the positive wire to the positive side of the battery, negative to negative. The wires are quite long so it doesn't have to be so close to the battery. I can shorten them but decide to keep as is in case I want to relocate the controller later on. Bring the solar panel cable to the MC4 connector, and we're done. If it blinks fast, it means it's charging fast. Oh, so... It's okay. very simple. No, oh, very blink simple. Blink slow, charging slowly. Blink fast, charging fast. All right, guys, so that is done for 
the roof panel on my the roof panel. <laughs> the hood panel. <laughs> <laughs> the hood panel. See, it's so used to. I'm so used to panels mounting on on your roof, whereas putting it on a hood is definitely, I think, a way better solution for your space because obviously you're not going to load anything on your hood. I hope you don't. Yeah. Thanks, Dave, again for. I guess creating this great product first to say, and then help me install it. So yeah, absolutely. I'm glad it could work out. And what sort of a vehicle do you guys have? So we now? offer them for a pretty wide range of vehicles and it's always expanding. We offer them for all sorts of Toyotas, Jeeps, Sprinter vans, uh, Dodge Rams, Ford trucks. The systems range kind of between 30 watts and 135 at the 135, biggest. wow. That's a triple panel system for the Dodge Ram, so you have to get three different solar panels wow. to make that up. Yeah. Great. Okay, so guys, to take a look at their website, just, just cascadia 4 by 4com That's right. Yeah, ship globally. Um, if you have any problem with install, hit them up, email them, and yell at them, whatever you want to do, you know, get those things on so you're not stranded outside. Can't, yeah, can't wait to bring it out under the sun. It's not really that sunny today, but it'll work. Fun fact, this model was originally created for a Subaru Crosstrack. It turned out perfect for a 100 series shape. So can we call it new product test fitting success? Time for some photos to add into the product line. As a skeptic, I questioned the idea of a hood solo at first due to engine heat. But when engine is running, batteries are charged through the alternator. Solar panels come to work when the car is parked and in its cold stage. So having a layer of air pocket insulation between the panel and the metal is what makes Cascadia's panel superior. Of course, I'll still credit myself for taping panel on the roof rack, leaving plenty of airflow underneath. When I'm not strapping cargo on top, of course. I also got some questions regarding glare. I don't know what you're seeing, but if anything, I reckon the paint reflects more than anything. The satin finish on the panel doesn't annoy my eyes at all. Overall, I'm pretty happy about this upgrade. Although on the pricier side, it's definitely a high quality product backed by research and development. Speaking of that, here's a sneak peek of what they are developing. Keep it quiet. You did not see this from me. FYI, it acts as a nice landing pad for the drone, <laughs> if you care. You can have a star wipe and just go glove break and then it'll come back and we'll be like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> You know, it's not how we're doing it. We only ever use the tape to, like, hopefully you're not filming any of this. <laughs> Please don't edit it out. We're using the 